Good morning or good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the first panel discussion of today, which is on the theme, financial initiatives to support the air transport industry through the crisis. This panel will discuss the perspective of UNECA, the African Development Bank and NetBank on the current situation, what actions are being taken by each of these organizations and we'll also discuss what are the recommendations for the industry stakeholders to take on financial support to the air transport industry. Join me in welcoming our panelists to this session. Our first panel uh, panelist is uh, Mr. Romain Ekoto, Chief Aviation Officer, African Development Bank. Romain is an aviation professional with more than 19 years of experience. As Chief Aviation Officer of the AFDB, Romain is responsible for developing and executing the bank's framework to support the aviation sector in Africa. We are also joined by Mr. William Lugemwa, who is the Director, Private Sector Development and Finance Division at the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa, UNECA. Our third panelist is Mr. James Geldenheis who is the head of aircraft finance at NetBank. James has 36 years of experience in South African banking. He spent the past 28 years in structured finance and he has several senior banking, he has held several senior banking positions. James has broad experience in international tax structured finance and transactions in the oil industry across Africa. Since 2001, James has had a special interest in aircraft leasing and drawing on his considerable expertise in the airline industry, he established NetBank's Specialist Aircraft Finance Division in 2008. I will be the moderator of the panel. Welcome uh, to our panelists. To start us off, to set the scene, since the pandemic, airlines, airports, CAAs, and other aviation industry players have faced severe cash burn and are facing serious liquidity crisis due to the collapse of passenger revenues, unavoidable cost of operations, ticket refunds, and so on and so forth. AFRA estimates that African airlines in 2020 lost US billion dollars, 10.21 in revenues and this is due to the impacts of the pandemic. Yesterday from the leaders panel, we learned that a total of 2.7 US, billion US dollars was received from 15 African states to support the aviation sector. The airlines that have received this support have been state-owned airlines. 2021 will be another difficult year because of new strains of the virus and the second and third waves. For Africa, it will take some time before the majority of the citizens are able to get the vaccination. Many airlines are at risk of bankruptcy and some of them already are under an administration while others are in business rescue. The situation is dire. AFRA and UNECA this year published a report entitled the policy research paper on COVID-19 and African airlines overcoming a liquidity crisis. This report focused on the indebtedness of airlines to banks, financial situation uh, institutions, aircraft leasing companies and aircraft manufacturers. It sheds light on the financing options and cost structures of these airlines. We had a, a survey uh, uh, between uh, by AFRA and UNECA, which cited, uh, was cited in this report. And this survey revealed that a one size fits all approach will not work to support our African airlines due to the differences in their size, in their labor employment uh, policies and other considerations. Therefore, we need to explore areas of assistance that will be targeted to suit each airline's specific needs. We will start our first question of the day and we'll start with UNECA. Welcome William uh, to the panel. 
what are some of the initiatives and activities that UNICA is undertaking for economic support to the travel industry according to the uh, uh, to, to push on from the impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic? Thank you very much, Maureen. Uh, my name is uh, William Lugemwa from uh, UNECA Private Sector Department. ECA, in line with this uh, role as the continent's uh, think tank, has contributed in shaping the direction on COVID-19 response in Africa. And this has been done through research on the impact of the pandemic on the continent's economies. On this basis, the research was commissioned by a research was commissioned by UNECA and uh, the African, African Union and also AFRA. And uh, we've hosted a number of uh, meetings and uh, uh, seminars with African finance ministers to see how best we try to resolve this liquidity problem that is being experienced by African airlines. ECA has also worked with their development finance partners to mobilize $100 billion fiscal stimulus to address health and social safety net and other economic issues on the African continent. In addition, ECA is working with these development partners to try to mobilize $100 billion for the private sector in Africa. And this is via the special drawing rights to provide liquidity and access to foreign exchange by African countries. More important, we are looking at uh, also negotiating with uh, creditors for African countries to have what we call the debt standstill or to give some uh, bit of uh, 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 flexibility in uh, the repayment of the, of the loans that are due during this uh, pandemic period. A number of African countries have received that uh, grace period and it has given them a bit of relief. And as indicated, liquidity is the biggest problem that uh, we see in most of the African economies. In addition, UNECA has done work with uh, AFRA with regards to surveying the African airline business to understand the indebtedness and how we can work with African airlines to respond to the COVID pandemic. That survey took place in 2020 and we got a very good response and an understanding of what was real needed immediately in the midterm and also in the long term by African airlines. Having done the survey with African airlines, ECA started engaging a number of our development finance institutions to see how best they could tailor products to assist African airlines. In this regard, ECA engaged Africzim Bank and under the pandemic facility of the Africzim Bank, African airlines have got access to financing by the African um, Afri Africzim Bank based in Cairo. Furthermore, we engaged with the airlines and the African Financing Corporation again to see how best we can assist African airlines and uh, the related uh, industries in this uh, pandemic period. More to that, we've engaged a number of fund managers globally that are looking at assisting African airlines in uh, this pandemic, especially with provision of uh, liquidity and provision of loans, and also assisting them with uh, any foreign currency requirements. I'll stop there for now. Over to you, Maureen. Thank you very much, William. A lot of uh, uh, initiatives that uh, UNECA is currently undertaking, and uh, it's quite um, encouraging to, to uh, learn uh, post the survey uh, AFRA and UNECA did uh, that uh, you are already engaging um, financial institutions on follow up actions to support our airlines. Uh, the next question, similar, uh, similar that we asked to uh, UNECA uh, from African Development Bank. Um, you are taking a number of initiatives with the intent to sustain practical efforts for countries, regional organizations, and African aviation sector companies to overcome their key challenges. 
Uh, Romain, uh, could you please tell us uh, some of these initiatives that uh, the bank is undertaking to support um, the industry from the impact of the pandemic? Thank you very much, uh, Maureen. And thank you um, to AFRA as well for inviting the African Development Bank to uh, speak on this uh, very important uh, panel. Um, in terms of actions that the African Development Bank uh, undertook to assist the industry, well, no specific action dedicated to the industry was uh, undertaken, but nevertheless, the African Development Bank set up a 10 billion um, COVID facility uh, last year to support governments and private sector in general. For the, for the aviation sector in particular, we had identified three uh, actions, one of them being indirect assistance to the aviation industry through national governments, the second one being direct assistance to aviation private sector companies, but this would be only existing clients. And the third one, which takes a bit longer to establish, is technical assistance to help the aviation industry recover from the COVID-19 impact. As of today, actually, several governments have benefited from the budget supports program from the bank to assist them in facing their shortage resulting from the COVID-19 crisis. And some of them have communicated to us about the aid packages that they have uh, provided to airlines. Uh, I would cite some examples, uh, Morocco with Royal Air Maroc, Egypt with Egypt Air, we have Rwanda as well with Rwanda, we have Côte d'Ivoire, we have Senegal and some others to come. And actually, once we do the review of the, the implementation of the budget supports program sometime this year, we'll be able to have more information about what has been done. With regards to the private sector, some airlines that are already clients with us have also solicited some support and uh, the discussions that we had with them um, revolved around debt referral, uh, deferral, sorry, debt re reprofiling, as well as some other relief options in order to assist them in coping with their financial uh, constraints. And at the moment, we are also looking actually at supporting airlines in uh, acquiring new aircraft to, to, to cope with the new market conditions. But of course, these are uh, business transactions on which we cannot uh, give more details at the moment, but hopefully before the end of this year, we'll be able to communicate more about what the bank has done for the private sector. And finally, about the technical assistance, this is under development and hopefully we'll be able to communicate as well uh, more on this in the coming weeks uh, about what the bank has done. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Romain, for um, the updates on uh, various initiatives that uh, the, the African Development Bank is undertaking. And uh, in particular, uh, under the COVID-19 response facility uh, by the bank, uh, what is your strategy uh, in your engagement with your principal clients uh, who are the states on how they allocate this financial assistance to trickle down to the aviation ecosystem airlines, airport authorities, civil aviation authorities, NSPs. Okay, so as I said, um, you know, the, the disbursement to government for the budget support programs are still ongoing at the moment. And what we do is to really sensitize the governments on the importance of the aviation sector for the economy and in order for more resources to be allocated to the sector. What we have observed, though, is that governments would rather give priority to the budget support program as opposed to sector support programs, because this gives them the, light, the, the leeway to address their challenges and decide on when and how they want to support the aviation sector. But what we really do and we try to do through our dialogue with countries is um, to, to, to highlight the importance of the aviation sector in the country's economy recovery, and um, aviation being interrelated with many other sectors, including trade and tourism, which have been greatly impacted by the, by the, by the COVID crisis. But again, uh, it, what is also very important is that we all convey, us as the aviation community, convey the same uh, message and also uh, substantiate, of course, this message with some statistics and, and, uh, and figures. And actually, the conference that we held last year also was uh, a great opportunity to convey and to sensitize 
not only the aviation community, but community, but also ministries of finance and other financiers that may have that have interest in the um, in the in the aviation sector. What we also observe is that um, some countries have actually started reconsidering the aviation infrastructure investments. And so we always make sure when we look at those projects that we include a technical assistance component that would really consider uh, 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 beyond the scope of the infrastructure project, we'd really consider in, in, uh, improving, enhancing the resilience at this, and the sustainability of the aviation sector in the country. So this will actually look at reforms that we consider as, uh, as critical. One of them being, of course, the liberalization of the market, where we continue to promote the SATEM through this important project that we are funding with the AFCAC for the, 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 the implementation of the SATEM. But also, we still consider uh, joining the SATEM as a prerequisite for any financial support by the bank to countries. And this is in addition to other support programs that we are implementing with countries to improve uh, their levels of safety and security. Thank you. Very um, uh, encouraging to um, uh, uh, learn from AFDB uh, these various initiatives. And indeed, we do commend you specifically on uh, the joint actions uh, that AFDB has been taking with uh, the aviation stakeholders. Um, and in, in, uh, in particular, uh, the, uh, you've mentioned the tripartite uh, project to support airlines under the framework of the SATAM, and we'll come back later to that um, uh, in, the, in the discussion. Uh, in this panel, we are joined by a commercial bank. The traditional commercial banks have historically played a role in meeting the financial requirements of the travel sector. As vaccination campaigns take hold, regional travel recovers. Uh, to uh, you, James, um, what are some of the initiatives that NetBank is undertaking uh, for the support uh, to the industry? James, you're on mute. That's a famous uh, 2020, 2021 saying, but yes, I'm now unmuted. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you loud and clear. As a commercial bank, you know, obviously we have a, a slightly different perspective and approach as our high esteemed panelists here. But obviously, in terms of COVID, uh, we are uh, seriously supporting and making big plans to support our clients and not only just our aviation clients, but across the spectrum, because every every one of our clients have been impacted by this uh, terrible pandemic that's that's um, really killed the ec economics. Um, factors all over the world. So from, from the travel industry, we obviously look after them. Um, and, and we very specifically have a number of airline clients, which we are supporting. And, you know, there's different ways from a commercial bank to support. You know, we could typically, uh, and, and every client is different because every client, even though they are airlines, they experience it differently because they would enter into the pandemic at a different stage um, and, and strength of their balance sheet. Typical things that we would consider is uh, typical financial things. We would consider deferrals where uh, are required. We would, uh, if only a, a debt um, reprofiling is required, we would look at that. In some instances, it's as simple as just some support from a um, just a capital working facility. So, you know, we also have seen some support from the governments coming through. Uh, domestically, we've got a COVID scheme from our government for entities which is uh, severely struck by COVID and as, as at the point where they can't lend from anybody else, they can't raise any money. There's a scheme and we've assisted in some of that. We've seen in some of the other jurisdictions internationally, similarly where the airlines are supported by government would say, if you bring in 20% equity, we will give you a, a, a guarantee for the remaining 80%, which you can then go to the commercial banks and raise funding on that. I think the main, the, main, the main point for us is we are trying our best to support airlines in order to keep them operational because we know that tourism and travel is, is super strategic to most countries' economies on that side. So we're quietly going about it, looking after our clients and support wherever we can.
Thank you, James. Indeed, the priority is to ensure the sustainability of the air transport industry and uh, uh, in our context, uh, the sustainability of, of airlines. Um, in your various initiatives uh, as network, um, how are you uh, collaborating with the other stakeholders uh, for financial support? Are, they, are there any areas where uh, you are uh, seeking avenues uh, to support uh, the industry through collaboration? Yeah, look, obviously we work with uh, the DFIs uh, on various of these transactions and we would welcome any of those uh, where we can play a commercial role so you know we've seen we've seen once again uh for instance in kenya we've seen the imf is identifying strategic um, projects um you know we're really happy to see that we're happy to support where we can and we know that those things are important because that gives us some comfort to our credit committees in terms of further supporting our clients um, but yeah we can't do much more than working with the with with the dfis as we're not a dfi ourselves but the DFIs play a super important role for us in the industry, and we welcome we welcome that support because that also provides comfort to the wider market and the wider industry to understand that aviation is severely under threat. We are the, fighting the forefront of the war on this pandemic, and hopefully we will be the first ones to come out, but that we can only hope for. Thank you uh, very much. Um, many financial institutions see airlines as a high risk business. Um, is this any different from uh, NetBank's perspective, James? So interesting question. The answer to that is airlines are high risk. They've always been, but NetBank always considers both the risk and the mitigants when we look at these transactions. That's why we're in the business. And I think that's the important thing, you know, where possible we can do that. Uh, we, we have been very active and existing cl clients on the continent is, is obviously um, Ethiopian, uh, KQ, Kenya Airways, uh, then obviously a lot of the airlines down in the south, uh, Air Link, Comair, Safair. Uh, we talk to most of the airlines on the continent uh, where, where we can reach the, 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 the margin because some of the airlines are very competitive. I mean, Royal Air Morocco's very, very competitive, great airline. Uh, so, so we've been trying to reach out to those. Um, Africa is our home, um, you know. So for us, um, we 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 get involved where we can. Targ Angola, we've been involved on that side with some bridging finance, um, but that's the kind of stuff that we're busy with from a day-to-day -day basis. M mostly a senior lender working with these airlines. Uh, quite um, interesting. Um, looking at uh, the various examples of airlines cited uh, in, in the session, we are hearing of state-owned airlines, government airlines. Uh, what about the, the privately owned airlines? Um, and even looking at the update that we received from yesterday's uh, uh, discussions on the, on the leaders forum, uh, unfortunately, most of this support is uh, going to state-owned and um, uh, government-owned airlines. Um, what are we doing from, for, for the private sector, um, Romain? Are there any um, um, uh, areas that uh, AFDB is um, are working on to ensure that this support trickles down also not only to the, the public-owned uh, entities and the state-owned entities, but also to the private sector? Uh, thank you, Maureen, for the, for the question. In fact, indeed, uh, um, as you said, uh, the direct support is actually provided through governments. Otherwise, we have also support, I mean, indirect support through governments, direct support to private sector that are already existing clients. The, the idea behind when making this decision at the bank's level was that we wanted to be able to fast track the interventions with the clients, not having to go through the whole due diligence process and be able to support them. Nevertheless, through governments, actually, support can be provided even to private sector airlines. But maybe rather than being um, a grant, this can actually be a concessional uh, loan or, you know, but again, this, this can be, and, and we do support it even from governments because private sector airlines also play a critical role in providing the air transport service 
in countries, and therefore they should not be left behind uh, when the government is looking at supporting the aviation sector. This is in relation directly to the COVID. But now more generally, as you know, the bank has engaged in an initiative about uh, establishing a listing platform for African airlines. And this is really more oriented towards the smaller airlines. And the idea behind was that in, uh, irrespective actually of the COVID situation, those airlines have had challenges in accessing financing or leasing their aircraft. So the main purpose of what we're trying to do is to come up with a solution that will de-risk leasing transactions for African airlines and for the lessor, and therefore enabling those airlines to access more modern uh, uh, and efficient aircraft and aircraft parts actually uh, at a competitive market price. What we're doing at the moment is actually to conduct a study that will determine the best solution to come up with this de-risking de solution. And um, uh, we hope, uh, I mean, based on our uh, schedule, the, the study will be completed within, uh, by October. And once we have the solution, then we will work on the, its implementation with the bank being one of the main sponsors. But we really want to crowd in, of course, the private sector because this is a private sector uh, oriented initiative. And also in working out the solution, we want to include as most uh, stakeholders as possible. And I've been in discussion with airlines, of course, with uh, lessors, with financial partners, and uh, we will in due course invite them in reviewing the deliverables that are being produced by this study to make sure that the solution we're going for is a practic practical and workable solution for the African market and for African airlines, and particularly the smaller airlines, of course. Yeah, indeed, this um, leasing company uh, for Africa, uh, the discussion has been quite uh, of interest. And uh, it's good to, to learn that um, FDB is currently doing the study and we expect to have this uh, concluded in October. Who are some of these uh, other stakeholders that uh, you have uh, as part of this project? So the project itself is an, it's a purely AFDB initiative in the sense that we are contracting a consultant, a consultancy company to work out on the solution. But we have milestones where we will involve uh, all the stakeholders that we believe are relevant to really comment and provide inputs and guidance on the solutions that will be proposed by the consultant. And as I said, we have had contacts with lessors with airlines, airlines associations, with the financial, financial as, um, institutions as well. Uh, and so we really intend to bring all those players together. So we'll have you know, uh, uh, inputs in order to really uh, uh, enhance the, the, the practicality and you know, the, the workability of the solution that we will be uh, 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 pursuing at the end of the study. And once the study is completed, a solution is proposed and retained, then this will be tabled in front of our board and we'll also try to crowd in as much partners as possible so that the solution can really make a difference in the African aviation market. Do we have in terms of timelines, any uh, tangible dates that uh, the industry can expect this platform to be uh, a reality? At this point, uh, we can say the study will be completed by October, and therefore, very likely, we'll have a consult. I mean, a, a consultation, either a workshop uh, or a meeting with the stakeholders around September to review the deliverables, discuss, and uh, agree on the way forward. So, October is solution. And once we have the solution, then depending on the nature of the solution, we'll be able to give some further timeline, because it really depends on what solution. Uh, we will have determined as the most suitable solution for to address the issue that we're trying to tackle. But Thank one you. thing we Thank can you. say is that October will be the target for the completion of the study. Thank you very much, Romain. And uh, over to you, uh, uh, William. Um, we've asked the other panelists uh, on uh, what are uh, their uh, perspective for supporting the, the private sector, the privately owned airlines. What is UNECA's uh, take on this? Thank you very much, Maureen. 
With regards to supporting the private sector, the initiatives that uh, EC, UNECA uh, negotiated and uh, worked with the other DFIs are open to the private sector. So private sector airlines can access funding from those DFIs, but more so we've uh, brought in addition to the DFI financing uh, funds, global funds that are interested in assisting African airlines with uh, one acquisition of new aircraft, two, the uh, uh, improvement in liquidity through working capital arrangements, and three, the improvement in infrastructure in response to COVID. So the private sector players are willing to uh, finance African airlines and African uh, aviation related infrastructure so that the airlines and uh, the related state-owned entities or airline uh, airport companies can respond to COVID. In addition to that, we've worked with the private sector, working with regards to the distribution of uh, pharmaceutical products on the African continent. Hence the establishment of the Africa Medical Supplies Platform. That was an initiative between the private sector and uh, the uh, respective uh, entities, including the African Union, uh, Africa CDC. And this platform, the objective is to aggregate Africa demand for pharmaceutical products so that when African countries go to the market, they can negotiate a better, uh, I mean, a better price and uh, in terms of engaging the respective uh, suppliers of medical, medical products. But more important, the distribution of those products can easily be coordinated. A number of African airlines, I think four or five, are currently distributing uh, the pharmaceutical products through the African medical supplies platform which is a very big plus for airlines in that irrespective of the uh, COVID uh, pandemic, African airlines are still able to distribute the critical pharmaceutical products on the African continent. More to that, we are looking at other initiatives. As you're aware, the ECA has been very critical with the implementation of the Africa continental free trade area. And we know the recovery of the African continent is going to be kickstarted by intra-Africa trade. And in this regard, we are working on a platform to see how African producers and suppliers could trade between countries and between regions. And that is again, very critical whereby we're trying to crowd in the private sector, African member states, and also to ensure that there's trade and movement. And the African airlines are, very, are going to be very critical in the distribution of that African goods and services uh, going forward. That is uh, what we are looking at right now from the ECA perspective of how we bring in the private sector, how we assist private sector companies, but also the government owned entities to ensure that African airlines still stay afloat. Over to you, Maureen. Thank you very much, William, uh, for sharing um, the various areas uh, where you are uh, engaging the private sector uh, to support the private airlines. Uh, to NetBank, um, for uh, your uh, side of uh, the, the business. Um, do you have uh, private airlines who are your clients? Are there any specific um, uh, measures that you are taking uh, to uh, meet them halfway, to support them uh, as they go through these uh, very difficult times uh, in terms of uh, your uh, engagement with them? Uh, are you extending uh, any sorts uh, of discounts um, any uh, measures uh, in, in that line? Maureen, yes. Um, so I think, you know, the point was made that maybe maybe only support is available for government airlines. We've seen support out there also for private airlines. It's just, it just looks slightly different. And I think it simply comes from because government airlines often are owned by the government. So it's easier. It's a different way where the shoulders will put in the support where a private airline is not owned. And they, that is where we see COVID loans and where we see possible guarantees issued by the, uh, by the various governments for support out to the private airline. So we see that and we then take our cue from that. Um, that is obviously the end of line. That's sort of the last resort for the airlines because often the support comes with, it always comes with strings attached. But we've seen in Europe that uh, some of the private airlines preferred not to accept the support because they didn't really like uh, the strings that came with it. 
then we come back to with what we can do. So we assist the airlines and we say, let's look at your balance sheet. Let's see if we can clean up your balance sheet. If you have a lazy balance sheet, by that, I mean, you have, might have assets which is unencumbered, assets which you might not be really needing anymore. So at, this is the time now to start looking to see if you can possibly sell those assets, to take the assets which you have uh, paid down your debt on to see if you can refinance some of those assets or on some of the other assets, whether you can maybe take some of your aircraft and do sale and lease banks and your simulators. Those are all tools that you have to build up some cash reserves because you know the one thing that's always important for an airline is to have cash reserves at all times. To get to have cash reserves, I think the first thing is you need to be properly capitalized. And I think that's something something that it's, it's falls by the wayside when airlines go through difficult times and they have profits, they don't necessarily get capitalized again if they're not um, able to build up the profits again. And I think that's something on the continent that happens. And then it's a big fight in the end as to, but the airline's not capitalized. And why is it not capitalized? There's lots of finger pointing. And I think, you know, we need to go back to the basics. We need to be capitalized. We need to make sure that we have certainty and continuity in our management teams so that we can be, because we can be profitable as African airlines on this continent. And there are airlines that are profitable. They are very successful airlines. And if you talk to these airlines, and as I believe, as also mentioned in some of the earlier sessions, one of the important things, for instance, and that's not just government-owned airlines, that's all airlines. Interference from the shell is private as well as government. Unfortunately, we see more of that from the government side. That interference from the shareholders is never a good thing because you appoint your management and your exco and they actually understand the business and they actually understand how to run this business. And you've got to let them run the business because the one thing that's important on the airline is, you know, your decision making needs to be very quick. You need to be agile. So you can't send decisions up the line to a board, to a government to get some feedback that simply doesn't work. So I think those are the, those are one of the the things that comes out strong in a pandemic is the need for cash is now bigger than than ever before. And I think if I can say to 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 other airlines out there, I mean Singapore has always been a good example. Low debt, good cash reserves. They're working hard at preserving that, and it comes because they. You know, they, their business model is based on the fact that they don't want to be isolated. So for them, they're super good support and they're really, really very, very key on that. Ethiopian is another good example as how they go about. They really want to be the hub. Yes, they are government owned, but, but they are shrewd in their business. They work very hard. They're very efficient. And if we watch them through the pandemic, they really, they really just kept on going. And once again, I think, Maybe they were blessed with a little bit less uh, interference from the government side, because that's one of the things that we deal with in the pandemic. There's this reaction from, from the various governments, which is to be safe, clamping down. And, and, you know, I think the important thing where what we've learned is that we can fly safely. And I think from all of us in this forum, we need to be out there. We need to tell people that it's safe in an aircraft and the air has been circulated many, many, many times a minute. You know, so really um, flying is safe. We need to be, be moving. We need to get our economies, economies going. And if we wear our masks, you know, we will be fine. So, so I think for us, those are the important things. We support where we can. Um, and it's also, it's also just, every day. I mean, we need to support our clients because we need our clients to also survive. Indeed. And um, back to my earlier um, uh, question that um, uh, from Romain's uh, interventions on the areas the, the bank is uh, supporting the industry. Uh, Romain, you mentioned about the tripartite project uh, and that FDB is funding to support uh, African Airlines under the framework of the SATAM. Uh, looking at uh, the update on the countries that have so far signed this same commitment, we do have a good number of states that are not yet signed up, whilst we have airlines in those states that would be uh, beneficiaries of this uh, kind of support. 
are there any plans um, in, in the line for the bank to uh, extend this support to the, the airlines in the states that are not uh, signed up yet? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Maureen, for this question, which is uh, actually not an easy one. Um, in the sense that um, the, the bank is really poised to support the implementation across the continent of the single African air transport market. And based on that, the board had determined when uh, um, approving our framework and guidelines to support the aviation sector in Africa that financing from the bank would actually be subject to the country benefic benefic uh, uh, the beneficiary country to join the Saturn because again we believe that the you know this initiative is uh, would would be benefit I mean would benefit not only the countries but also the airlines. Now um, what what we we consider is actually to use it as an incentive for countries or airlines that would like to be supported because we we really believe that this would. Uh, uh, add value to those uh, countries or airlines. Now, what about those that have not signed? Usually, we will make it requisite. But um, again, it's not. Uh, it's not a. a, a, a we, we are open to discussion because there are cases where the process might be long. But we really need to see that there is a clear will and commitment from the government to join the the, the SATEM and really to open the market because ultimately. What is really important, I mean, from, from our perspective, is the service that is being provided to travelers. And opening the market increases the possibilities of air transport services being offered uh, to, to travelers. Now, I know there are also thoughts about using the financing of the, air, of the, the bank as an incentive before the countries can join. And we are open to discuss and consider it on a case-by-case -case basis. But in general, the bank's position is that we are ready to support any country provided the country is a member of the SATEM. So this is a general position of the bank, but we are open to discuss on a case-by-case -case basis if we see a clear interest uh, and uh, uh, opportunity in supporting uh, an airline from a country that is not a member of the SATEM. Indeed, uh, it's a good incentive to encourage states to sign up for SATAM. And uh, we will uh, receive some uh, more details about this tripartite later in the day today from the presentation uh, by AFRA, Director, Technical and Operations, and, uh, on, on what uh, AFRA is doing, uh, because AFRA is part of uh, this tripartite um, agreement uh, where we signed with uh, IATA and uh, we are working uh, with, with AFCA. And uh, thank you to FDB for. Uh, extending to Africa uh, this uh, support. Um, looking at uh, the time, we not have so much time left just to uh, get some, some key uh, highlights from the panelists. Um, to start with uh, UNECA, what is your um, number one priority that uh, we need to uh, focus on for uh, the uh, restart of the, the industry in terms of uh, financing? Thank you very much, Maureen. I think we need to go back and uh, uh, ensure that uh, the African ministries of finance and ministerial, ministers of transport do an in-depth analysis and understanding of the importance of the aviation sector to the African economies. More important, when you look at the aviation sector per se, there are so many other accompanying industries like uh, travel and tourism that are so important to African economies. And there's the need to put uh, uh, significant resources to ensure that uh, the airline aviation industry is considered as one of the key drivers of the African economies and uh, one of the sectors that will be needed for the recovery of the African continent. When we talk about intra-Africa trade, again, it is going to be the transport sector, the aviation sector, that is gonna be kickstarting the trade between countries. And that is uh, the movement of goods from one country to another, but more important uh, the movement of uh, business people looking for markets in the respective parts of Africa. So for us, we see the aviation sector, not per se as uh, supporting aviation industry, but uh, looking at a broader economic impact of the aviation sector 
That includes trade, tourism, and uh, so on and so forth. We are looking at a number of initiatives. For instance, when it comes to African aviation sector, the financing and uh, whether we need a dedicated fund or facility to support African uh, aviation. Other areas or other parts of the world have been, uh, airlines have been lucky that uh, their respective governments have uh, supported them here and there. But a number of African airlines are struggling to get NA support from uh, the sovereigns or from the governments or even the financial institution. So we need to think about how we organize the African, uh, uh, African airlines in terms of uh, financing and also the operation of the airlines. And uh, you talked about the Africa single market uh, for airlines. All those are very important that we need to start thinking highly on how to support the African airlines and ensure that the African airline survives and it recovers post COVID. Over to you, Maureen. Thank you very much, uh, William, for uh, your key take home from uh, UNECA. Uh, back to FDB, what are your key take home uh, recommendations uh, for the industry to take on actions to support uh, the uh, airlines and uh, the uh, entire ecosystem from the impacts of COVID pandemic? Um, one, I mean, two takeaways from, from my end. One is, uh, I mean, financial institutions are, um, are willing and ready to support provided well-structured projects are presented and also uh, our airlines are show uh, good governance practices. And if, <clears throat> And when necessary, uh, those airlines should, I mean, should 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 use solicit the services. I mean, should solicit assistance in structuring their projects. So, because it's really important to come up with a well-structured uh, project. Another uh, comment as well is, uh, you know, we've been talking a lot about taxes, uh, charges that are high for the sector, and this is a reality. But what we have observed from our uh, uh, discussions and dialogue with countries is that the situation can vary significantly from one country to another, especially when those services have been concessioned to private parties. So the approach consisting in, in, um, in uh, tackling the issue as a regional issue, it, in our view, have shown some, some limits. And really consider that at the national level, this issue should be really analyzed and understand like in different concession contracts, what are the challenges? Why do we have those high taxes and charges and address them at a local level? And this will definitely also assist in improving the profitability of our airlines and therefore improve the bankability of their financing uh, projects. So this would be the two takeaways from the African Development Bank. Thank you. Thank you, Romain. Sustainability. In, in enhance the bankability of airlines. Uh, that's a key take home from AFDB. And uh, to you, James, what is your one item on your wish list? Only one item. <laughs> so what I can say is that I think William and, and Romain has touched, you know, touched that subject very well there. And movements of goods and people is crucial for all economies. Accountability is good, but I think what we've seen is support from everywhere in this pandemic. And I think as airlines, I would say, let's put our head down. Let's look at where we can be cost effective. Let's look at what we can each do every day um, to make it better. Because unfortunately, being an airline, passengers don't come and then you bring the aircraft. You have to put out the planes there. You have to put out the availability of the seats and then passengers come. So unfortunately, as airlines and the aviation, we have to run in front. So, but I think we can all do it together. And I think we've done well so far. And let's keep on doing that. Thank you very much to our very able panel for uh, sharing the insights on various actions that uh, your organizations are undertaking to support airlines and your key recommendations uh, that we have taken from this panel. Uh, we've come to the close of the session and uh, we are now uh, ready to start the next session. For the recording of uh, the panel, uh, this will be posted on the uh, attendee hub. If you need to follow or send to your colleagues, please invite them to do so. Uh, to join the next session, please go back to your attendee hub. We have uh, lined up um, 
uh, an interview for the next session and we look forward to meeting you uh, then. Bye-bye. Um, Thank you, bye-bye. Thank you, bye-bye.